I want to bring in now Jules Jaffe. He's a research oceanographer with uh, the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. He joins me. Of course, Richard Quest is here with me as well. Jules, um, good to talk to you. You know, we just saw David Mattingly demonstrate for us what it's like in a sub. Now, granted, this is just approximately the approximation of searching underwater, but what did you think of that? It's fascinating television nonetheless, but it really shows you the challenges. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the way to do this is actually in a sub. Um, we, uh, you know, as part of doing a little bit of research myself in preparation for this show, I actually went around and asked them, my colleagues, many of my, anyway, we say big ocean, you know, a small group of people working in this area. And uh, actually, there was nobody really that believed that working in a sub is the right way to do this. I think there's, uh, you know, imagine you're in a, a sub and you only have two or three hours or four hours and you start working. And then it doesn't go well. And so all of a sudden, you've got to go back up to the surface. If you were using an ROV, that is a remote operational vehicle, in principle, you've got, you know, 24-7, a guy sitting on the ship. Somebody can relieve that person. Um, we know how to do that kind of stuff. So I think the whole idea of using a sub, to be really honest, and the consensus of my colleagues was that it's really not a good idea. But, Jules, uh, the thing is, it's not to show that using the sub, that's really not the... the the premise here is okay. to show the conditions under the water, how dark it is, the silt, how would they retrieve the black box potentially, um, even if it was an unmanned uh, vessel or however they would retrieve the box. It's yeah. not as if they would be using the sub to do it. It's just to show the conditions there. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, thanks for clarifying that. Um, you know, there's no doubt that working in the ocean, working in the deep ocean is a very, very difficult thing. And one of the things about this story as a person who develops technology that I really like is, is uh, giving the public an idea of what we do and how hard it is to do. And so I would have to agree, you know, but there are people that are specially trained to do those kinds of things, and there are a number of successes that they've uh, achieved in that, you know, in that scenario. And sure, it's tough. We need, we need you know, expert people that know how to work underwater with underwater vehicles and things like that. Of course, it's, it's really tough, but yeah. these guys can do it. Yeah, and so let's, let's talk about the bluefin now because that's what they're using now. That is the uh, submersible that they're, that they're using now to go under. It has had some problems, but it has had some successful missions as, as well. Um, and I don't know if we, you can even call the first day a problem because it did what it was supposed to do. It went too deep and it did what it was supposed to do, it came back up. So I don't know if that's a problem. That's, that's called working right there. But the Prime Minister of Australia, Tony Abbott, has said that you know, they will exhaust uh, everything there, exhaust everything they need to do, as long as they need, need to take for the bluefin to cover this area. How long do you think that will take? Well, you first have to know how big the area is. Um, I mean, if you look at the specifications of the manufacturer of the side scan, it can see about 1,000 feet to either side. And if it's moving, say, about four or five miles an hour, you're going to be mapping something on the order of 25 to 35 square miles per day. Um, one of the disappointing parts of the story, as I would have to agree, is that we haven't found it yet. Um, but it's not that surprising. I mean, it, it sort of means to me that the pinger and the fuselage or any of the debris are actually not very close together. And hopefully, they're not very far, far apart. So I wouldn't say, you know, we're on the gauge. We're not on the red zone yet. We're still green, yellow, and I think we just need to pay, be patient, to be honest with you. And hearing the Australians talk about that, it actually gives me some, some you know, hope because what I'm sort of hearing in techno world is the side scan images are looking good. You know, we're not seeing a lot of clutter. If the stuff was there, we'd probably be able to see it. And so I think you know, it's hard to know. I'm not a soothsayer, but I think there's some confidence that we're just going to have to keep looking in a world where you can flip an iPhone or anything out up and call an app and find out some information. We just have to be patient and hold on. This is not the deep ocean, right? I mean, that's not the deep ocean. So I'm not really in a panic state. I think we're heading towards yellow, but I still think we're in the green on the gauge. You're not a soothsayer? Then, well, my God, why do we have you here? Then? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Johnny Carson used to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. It was Amazing <laughs> Cressley or something like that. Yeah, so Kreskin, Kreskin, Kreskin. Is there a yeah, chance right. of getting a sort of false positive result in, in these images? You mean the side scan images, yeah. the sonar images? Yeah. Sure. I mean, that's what we worry about. That's... This is the sort of non-intuitive part of it. I mean, 
uh, we know that there's a layer of silt, but what's underneath that silt is probably not known. And uh, we're looking for, as I had said a few days ago on your show, the sort of foreground and the background. And yeah, if, we, if there's a boulder there that's sort of the same size as the black box and it's covered with silt, I don't think we're going to have an easy time telling the difference. So the answer is yes. Thank you, O oh soothsayer, Jules Jaffe. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you. Thank you very much. And uh, you have a happy holiday and a, and a happy weekend. We're not here tomorrow, but thank you, sir.